9. Lost U-boat discovered. In 2017, Belgian authorities announced the discovery of a German U-boat in the North Sea off Flanders. It was surprisingly intact, minus some significant damage to its front end, and it contained the remains of the 23 sailors who went down with it 100 years earlier. Identified as a UB-2 torpedo boat, the 88-foot-long, 27-meters U-boat was found roughly 82 to 98 feet, 24 to 29 meters below the water's surface. Based on the damage the vessel sustained, researchers believed its upper deck was struck by a British mine. Capable of diving up to 150 feet, 45.7 meters underwater, UB-2 type submarines were produced in 1915 and 1960. At the time the discovery was announced, authorities were unsure of its identity because its markings were covered in barnacles. They speculated that it was one of three that sank in the area during the war. U-boat 27, 29, or 32. And it's one of 11 World War I U-boat wrecks that have been found in the region. 8. Devastating Debt World War I was extremely expensive for everyone involved. The U.S. government fell $25 billion into debt, but the country's economy was strong throughout the 1920s and recovered in the years leading up to the Great Depression. The situation was far less promising throughout Europe, where the cost of goods increased dramatically due to inflation and unemployment skyrocketing simultaneously. Germany was hit the hardest. After funding its war effort largely through borrowed funds, the defeated country's economy was left in shambles. To make matters even worse, the Treaty of Versailles blamed Germany exclusively for the war and ordered it to pay reparations totaling the equivalent of around $500 billion in modern U.S. currency. As the value of the German mark rapidly depreciated, the newly implemented Weimar Republic overprinted money. Hyperinflation ensued amid an ongoing nationwide food shortage that lasted for years to come. By late 1923, 42 billion marks equaled just one American cent, and the cost of a loaf of bread jumped from one mark in 1919 to 100 billion marks four years later. Determined to ensure that Germany paid its war reparations, the countries it owed money to introduced the Dawes Plan in 1924. The policy reduced Germany's debt, restructured the country's currency, and the US lent Germany money to help with its financial deficit. A period of relative economic stability followed, but the Dawes Plan wasn't a magical fix for the Weimar Republic's financial issues. The Great Depression caused a renewed crisis, and Germany was unable to pay reparations once again. In 1932, European allied countries tried to write off the debt, but the US refused to go along with the plan. Hitler then rose to power the following year and refused to make any payments. The situation only became more complicated during the Cold War, when Germany was split into two countries. During that period, half of the debt was cancelled and an extension on the payment deadlines was granted. Payments resumed after Germany reunified in 1990. The final installment of $94 million was paid in 2010, 92 years after the Treaty of Versailles imposed the massive debt on the country. 7. The Zone Rouge More than 300,000 French and German soldiers died in the Battle of Verdun in 1916. It lasted for 300 days, making it the longest sustained battle of World War I. The violence occurred across a vast swath of northeastern France, leaving some areas permanently altered and dangerous. After the war ended, the French government created the Zone Rouge, or Red Zone, a collection of areas that were deemed completely destroyed and uninhabitable, occupying 42,000 acres, 16,997 hectares, the territory was littered with millions of pieces of unexploded ordnance, along with human and animal remains. There was also a surplus of lead, mercury, chlorine, arsenic, and other dangerous chemicals. People were banned from entering the Red Zone, which had been used as a farmland before the war. Several destroyed villages fell within the restricted area, and only some of them were rebuilt. More than a century later, efforts to clean up live munitions have continued. 
the government has eased up on some of the restrictions, but parts of the red zone remain entirely off limits to humans, including areas where the soil is so contaminated that plant life still won't grow. Authorities estimate that at the rate the cleanup is going, it'll take between 300 and 700 years to completely clear the area of explosives. Even the areas that have been largely reclaimed by nature continue to bear visible evidence of human ventures. Shelling and trench activity have left the ground extremely uneven. The locations of some former villages are marked only by signs, while the destroyed remnants of others serve as eerie reminders of the destruction of war. 6. The Sinking of the Lusitania The nearly 800-foot-long, 244 meters RMS Lusitania was the world's largest luxury liner when she hit the seas for the first time in 1907. She spent the next seven years transporting thousands of travelers across the Atlantic between Europe and North America. After World War I broke out in 1914, the Lusitania was among the few passenger vessels that remained in service, despite the growing threat of German U-boats. Historically speaking, attacking a civilian ship belonging to an enemy country was typically considered a war crime. But when Britain cut Germany off from vital supply routes with a blockade across the North Sea and the English Channel, the Germans retaliated with unrestricted U-boat attacks on Allied vessels throughout the Atlantic. The Lusitania received a drab gray paint job to make her less noticeable as she sailed through dangerous war zones. But this wasn't enough to protect the ship from an attack. After the sinking of several merchant ships off Ireland's southern coast in 1915, the British Admiralty advised civilian ship captains to avoid the region or to sail in a zigzagging pattern to make it difficult for U-boats to track their course. The Lusitania's captain ignored the recommendations and was torpedoed 11 miles, 18 kilometers, off Ireland toward the end of its 202nd Atlantic crossing. Just 18 minutes after being struck, the ship slipped beneath the waves and plunged to its watery grave, taking nearly 1,200 of its 1,962 passengers and crew members with it. Many of the survivors were later commended for their bravery after springing into action to rescue others who were in distress. American officials condemned the sinking of the Lusitania as an international war crime, while Germany defended the decision to attack the ship which was carrying war munitions for Britain. Two more years would pass before the U.S. entered the war, but the disaster played a major role in the country's eventual decision to end its isolationist policy and join the Allies. Do you know anyone in your family that has incredible stories from either of the world wars? Tell us about them in the comments, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. 5. Photos of a Mystery Woman in 2013, a collection of private photographs dating back to World War I surfaced in northern France. A handful of the images show someone in a New Zealand lieutenant's uniform and hat standing alongside a fellow officer. Other pictures feature one of the men standing with a woman on his knee. A closer look, however, reveals that the woman is also the person wearing the lieutenant's uniform and hat in the other photos. The snapshots were taken in the yard of a house roughly 30 miles, 48 kilometers, from the battlefront of the Somme. One of the individuals featured in them turned out to be an Australian man named Captain Albert Arthur Chapman, who served with the New Zealand military. The woman, on the other hand, was never identified. Historians were left baffled as they tried to figure out who she was. At first, they theorized that she may have been one of the first female military officers, but this was proven inaccurate. There were no female officers in the British or New Zealand militaries during World War I. So, whoever the woman was, she was wearing someone else's uniform in the pictures. She wore a wedding ring, yet Captain Chapman returned home from the war alone and unmarried. In fact, he never married. It's possible that the unidentified female was a local French woman, and while the relationship between the pair certainly seems romantic in some of the images, she may have been the friend, family member, or wife of one of Chapman's fellow soldiers. 4. The First Ever Tank Warfare The first ever tank warfare occurred during World War I, with the use of British-built Mark I tanks. 
designed in 1915, their purpose was to help break the stalemate that had developed by enabling Allied troops along the Western Front to traverse across uneven terrain and ram through barbed wire. In addition to playing a crucial role in securing Allied war victory, the Mark I changed the very nature of modern warfare. The first tank-like vehicle ever built was called the Little Willie, but it never went into production and was superseded by the Mark I prototype. Tanks were originally called land ships. In fact, the word tank was used as a code name to preserve their secrecy. Workers at William Foster & Co., the company that manufactured the Mark I, referred to the Mark I's first prototype as the tank because of its resemblance to a steel water tank. The Mark I made its first appearance in 1916, during the Battle of the Somme, one of the war's biggest and most decisive conflicts. According to legend, an enemy soldier saw the tank approaching and yelled, The Devil is coming! The first tank research and development took place in Britain and France. France debuted their first tanks in 1917, more than a year later than Britain, and ended up producing more throughout the war than all other countries involved in the conflict combined. Germany followed the Allies' lead after realizing that tanks were going to be an inevitable aspect of 20th century warfare. And while the Allies ultimately deployed thousands of tanks, Germany only sent 18 of the vehicles into the battlefield. As much of a game-changer as tanks were, the first models were sluggish and unreliable. They broke down often, and the best models only performed reasonably well at best on difficult terrain. But it was a starting point, and the technology would come a long way in the years leading up to World War II, which saw widespread tank combat on almost every front. 3. Nurse Margaret Mall. In 2013, staff members at Abertay University in Scotland discovered an old suitcase inside a cupboard in the college's psychology department. It was filled with World War I memorabilia belonging to a nurse named Margaret Mall. Included among the relics was photos, letters, newspaper articles, syringes, and other medical equipment. Based on the items inside and on the available records, it appears as though she tended to badly wounded German soldiers in Kent and British soldiers in Glasgow. Margaret received letters from British, German, and French soldiers thanking her for saving their lives and lifting their spirits. Her compassion shows that she saw these injured men as humans above all regardless of which country they served during the war. She retired in 1969 at the age of 82 after working as a nurse for 52 years. Aside from all this, nobody seems to know who Margaret really was or how her suitcase ended up at Aberté University. Researchers appealed to the public for information about the woman in hopes that someone comes forward and can tell them more about her fascinating life. But at the moment, there aren't many details available on Margaret Mall. 2. Russia begged Germany to stop the war. World War I officially began on July 28, 1914. That same morning, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia sent a telegram to his third cousin, Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany, begging him not to go to war with Serbia. He explained that doing so would inevitably drag Russia into the conflict and Nicholas didn't want that. In his response, Wilhelm reassured Nicholas that the war was meant to hold the assassins who killed Archduke Franz Ferdinand responsible. He promised that he was doing his best to ensure that Russia could remain neutral. Unfortunately, though, their diplomatic attempts to avoid a worst-case scenario of all-out violence failed. Even if they'd tried harder, there was ultimately little the two leaders would have been able to do to stop the war from happening. Just days after Wilhelm and Nicholas exchanged the telegrams, Germany declared war on Russia. The next four years brought the worst devastation Europe had ever experienced until World War II came around. 1. America cancelled Germany from its culture Before World War I, German was the second most commonly spoken language in the United States. After America entered the conflict in 1917, anti-German sentiments quickly spread throughout the country. Newspapers and government agencies produced extremely disparaging propaganda against Germany, triggering a widespread distrust of Germans throughout America. 
Individual states began passing laws imposing English-only requirements on their education systems, which effectively banned German from being taught in schools. These bans continued after the war, and by the early 1920s, 34 states had passed laws prohibiting the language. Music companies refused to sell German songs, and even certain words were changed. Sauerkraut became Liberty Cabbage, and German fried potatoes were also renamed to avoid reflecting the dish's origins. One of the more disturbing aspects of America's cancellation of German culture was its war on the Dachshund dog breed. Sadly, many innocent pets were stomped, stoned, and shot to death simply because of the breed's German roots, and some people came to see owning a Dachshund as unpatriotic or even anti-American. Others refused to blame the breed, but insisted on renaming it the Badger Dog or Liberty Pup. Have you ever stumbled upon some old pictures of people you didn't recognize? If so, what did you do with the photographs? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.